Hi, you're listening to the YouTube edition of In Context. This is Ken McDermott Rowe. And this is Gus Cantavero. Today we're going to be talking about public banking. The idea is pretty simple. States will use their own funds as the reserve to create a new bank. And the bank that's owned by the state will make loans to promote infrastructure growth and business development within their own states. And it's very important business to get into for the states because during this terrible economic recession we're in, it's all about cut, cut, cut. And we need to think of creatively about new ways to grow our economy. And this seems to be a good way to do that. How is this different than what the banks already do? There's almost only one state in the country, the Bank of North Dakota, in, uh, which has been involved in state banking since 1919 that has such an institution. Mm -hmm. And it's operated very successfully there as for almost a century. And uh, in North Dakota, it's important to note that they have a very uh, low unemployment rate and that they uh, a budget which is one of the few state budgets which is in balance. So it's worked very effectively there for a century. And the tradition actually goes back to colonial times of state-owned banks, back to Pennsylvania. They had a state-owned bank, and it was uh, championed by Benjamin Franklin, who attributed Pennsylvania's prosperity in the 18th century to the fact that Pennsylvania issued its own loans to create business development in that uh, commonwealth. This is my that can be loaned to uh, commercial banks that will then take that money and lend it at a reasonable interest rate to the citizens of the state to fund projects like infrastructure or... It could be done for many different purposes and it could be done in many different ways. The state bank could loan money directly for infrastructure pro uh, projects or in the case of North Dakota, often enters partnerships with other banks mm -hmm. uh, for, for large projects or for emergency loans or for, in some cases, student loans. It would all depend on the priorities of the state. Personally, I think that the main use of such a bank right now would be for infrastructure to promote the uh, economic productivity of a given state and also for small business loans loans for businesses that are cut off from private uh, lending right now. All right, and this is something that is a nonpartisan issue. This isn't something that we're advocating to benefit the bankers because this money would produce uh, future revenues that would then be paid back to the state. Uh, very good point, Gus. These uh, bank loans made by the state bank will produce revenues from interest collected, even though the interest will be at a pretty reasonable rate compared to the private sector. Right. And those in that income from interest will go right into the state treasury. So what is the relationship between the commercial banks that citizens can go up and interact with and get loans from to put their deposits into with a state-run bank? Well, in the case of North Dakota, they didn't really go in big time into the savings accounts, the checking accounts. They see the, themselves as a catalyst for the private sector acting in partnership with other banks to make loans. State bank could have its own savings accounts and checking accounts, but it seems to me that's a need that's already been met by the commercial banks. Where we really have the need for state finance banks is for projects that are so long-term that the private sector wouldn't find a sufficient short-term return for them to get into it. How, how does it actually work? The states, at any given time, have substantial amounts of money in what they call a rainy day fund. In the case of a state like California, that, that can be as much as $70 billion. That's a significant amount of money. Huge amount of money uh, but that state agencies need for their operating uh, uh, functions that uh, this Treasury Department may have from tax revenues that are waiting to be dispersed. So these funds are right now, they're just sitting there. Maybe the bank's getting a 1% or 2% return on it and putting it into investments that in no way may benefit the state. They may be used for speculation and derivatives uh, or any other purpose that's not contributing to the state's economy. So the idea is we use this bank or the state would use these, these, these funds that are available as a reserve. Now, the reserve doesn't actually get lent out. A reserve in a bank, whether it be the state-owned bank or the commercial bank, is simply used as a backstop for the new loans that are created by the state bank to stimulate growth. And that can be done under the fractional reserve system many times greater than the actual amount of reserves. So you could actually make loans that are multiples of the amount of reserves you have. But the difference would be where uh, commercial banks and, say, like the Federal Reserve, which is privately run, they use fractional reserve banking to benefit themselves and their shareholders where a state-run bank would use fractional reserve to actually inject liquidity and capital into the state economy. That's right. It would be for the benefit of the state economy, not, not the benefit of uh, investments or speculation elsewhere. Additionally, the uh, state-owned bank w would obviously not be paying huge bonuses to uh, high-flying, risk-taking executives. The guys would be paid who work there would be paid reasonable salaries, and they wouldn't be charging exorbitant interest rates because the state could obviously set the interest rate that it, which it chose to lend money.
Beside North Dakota, which already has this bank functioning, aren't there other states around the country that uh, currently have bills pending to uh, create a state-run bank? That's right. There are seven states that have now are considering bills to either create a state bank or to study the feasibility of creating a state bank, including uh, Michigan, Massachusetts, Illinois, Virginia, and Oregon. So it's a substantial movement, and it, behind it now, or helping to foster it, is a new organization called the Public Banking Institute, which is chaired by Ellen Brown who wrote a book called Web of Debt. And she's one of the leading money experts in America. And she's decided to put her knowledge of money to work to create this a new state banking movement. So to summarize, a commercial bank will lend money out at a high interest rate and, and earn a profit on that, which benefits them as a corporation. But a, a state-run bank would be taking the interest rate, which is much more moderate, uh, and then putting that money back into the state coffers, which they can create more public service projects or reduce taxes or or do whatever else that would benefit the citizens of that state. Exactly, Gus. And it's really a no-brainer. There's no reason not to do it. That money is sitting there in the state governments earning minimal interest. And it could be, be leveraged as, as a reserve for a new bank to benefit the state and its citizens. Not only that, but the states are investing their money into banks in other states or in other, other locales that is not benefiting the state in any way, any shape or form. The biggest form of investments now are derivatives, and they're doing nothing for your local local state development. Well, one of the problems that's hitting the economy right now is that we've seen a lot of the states and cities invest their money into funds that have been completely pilfered by by the, uh, the the economic crisis right now, causing all the layoffs and budget cuts. And as a state agency, this state bank will be subject to the scrutiny of the elected representatives. So there's going to be accountability. Do you think that the op- opponents of the public banking might say that this is going to put the government in a position where they can choose the winners and losers in the economy? I think there has to be a concern that you want the bank to be run in a very business-like basis. And I think that this banking community can be brought to to understand that this will benefit them too. If a state economy is increased in prosperity because of investment in infrastructure, that's going to be a boost to businesses of all kind. Thanks very much for listening to this YouTube edition of In Context. This is Ken McDermott Rowe. And Gus Cantavero. You can check out our website, incontextreport.com on the web and then make your comments on our blog and you can tune in to us on WPKN 89.5 FM in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Our schedule is listed on the website. And we're also streamed live at WPKN.org. Thanks for listening.